Como é que é, guys? How are you? I hope everything is fine with you. Welcome to my channel. Today we are going to talk about four techniques on Photoshop, the most used ones in photography and the ones that I use the most. I'm for, I'm uh, almost forget. If it's the first time that you are watching, welcome to this channel. I'm Fabio. Uh, this channel is about traveling photography and uh, videography. I'm starting this channel this year to improve my skills on the on the video side and uh, we are almost at 100 subscribers. If you are new, don't forget, give it a subscribe. Now, without further ado, let's get into it. And the first technique that we are going to talk, it's the high pass. It's a technique used to add sharpness to a photo without losing detail. It's the best non-destructive way to add sharpness to a photo. Now, here it's our background. Every time that I, that I say or control C or control V uh, in Windows corresponds to the option key on the MacBooks. Okay, so every time that I say control something, it's command something. Every time that you work in Photoshop, make sure that you create a copy of your background layer. And to do that, you just need to press control J. Then, to do the I pass technique, you go to filter others and I pass. Then we'll show you this uh, small window. The radius, it's the amount, let's, see, let's say that it's the amount of sharpness that you want to add to a photo. Don't exaggerate this value, okay? Or otherwise your photo will look disgusting. The rule of thumb that I use, the, the way that I use to make sure that I don't overpass that limit It's to, here it's a zoom area of your photo, is to increase the radius slowly and when I'm start seeing some detail, for example, here, see, there's a lot of detail here. So I go down a little bit, I push it down, 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 in every, in for the experience, I choose between 05 and 1 pixels to do the this sharpening. Then you're going to press OK. Then here on the blending mode, you want to choose the overlay. And now our technique is applied. Now you can zoom in and I'm going to show you the difference with and without the eye pass. This is without the eye pass and this is with the eye pass. You can see it clearly here on the hand, the amount of sharpness that we have added just with 0.5. For the second technique, I want to show you how to remove things or people from your photo. I'm going to show you three ways of doing it. The first one will be the content awareness field. It's the most used one in my case. Here you can see you have a very busy photo. At the end, I'm going to show you the, the final photo of this all this mess that I've edited some months ago. And I took like four or five hours to edit all this photo because I have to remove all the people and do a lot of cloning. So you, you do a copy of your background, Control J to do it. Then you're going to the lasso tool. It's this icon. Then select the area or the thing that you want to remove. Inside of the selected area, you're going to click on the right button on your mouse, fill. When you press the fill, it will pop up this window And here you don't need to do anything, just press OK. And Photoshop will do all the work for you. As you can see, has done a more or less good job. Just this area here is a bit awkward, but we, we can do it again, for example, here. And fill, OK. And you can use it, this technique, not only with the lasso tool, but also with the rectangle. Just need to make a selection and fill. So, The other technique that I use in Photoshop to remove things, the healing brush. I use it especially to remove small objects or particles like, uh, like some dust on your sensor or some drops for small, small areas on your photo. And it's very easy to use. You just need to select the area and Photoshop will do the magic for you. It's very easy to use this one. The other technique that I use to remove things, the cloning uh, tool. It's this icon over here, okay? Here, just you're just going to clone an area and put it in another area, okay? 
for example, I can choose this part of the beach here and then I can clone it. Here again, you just need to imagine, I want to remove, uh, imagine this person over here. I can clone here and just start painting like this. Once again, doesn't do a better job than the content and fill. So this is the three ways of removing things from your photos, okay? The content aware field, healing brush, and the clone stamp. The third technique that I want to show you, it's called the Orton effect, invented by a sir that's called Orton. And it's a technique very used by the landscape photographers and none also. I especially use this technique when I have photos of woodlands or hazy, hazy atmospheres to enhance the haze. You start by copying your background layer, then go to filter. Ah, one thing, don't forget, there is a, a lot of ways of doing the Orton effect, okay? This is just one of the ways that I know, and for me it's the most fastest way and the most simple way of doing it. So, you go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur. Then, in Gaussian blur, the rule of thumb for this window is you're going to choose the radius having in consideration the megapixels of your camera sensor. I'm using a, a Sony Alpha A7 III and this sensor is 24.6 megapixels. So here I'm going to put 24.6. But imagine that your sensor has 32 megapixels. Here you're going to put 32 megapixels. That's the rule of thumb. You press OK, then you come to image, adjustments, brightness and contrast. And here you're going to push up the sliders until you break the highlights. When you clip the highlights, you can stop. Then you clip the shadows with the contrast. You push the brightness until you clip the highlights and push the contrast until you clip the, the blacks. Then you press OK. And then you just need to come to the opacity, choose the opacity that you want. Normally I use between five and 10%. And here you can see with, without the effect. Look how the, the shadows blend with the eyelids, guys. And this is it, Orton effect. Now, for the fourth technique, I'm going to show you how to remove halos from a photo. Halos can happen by a lot of ways. Exaggerating the, the editing, mainly the highlights, cutting the highlights too much or giving give it too much clarity, okay? It can cause this halo effect here on the high contrast areas like this one and if you are also doing sky replacement this can happen the halos it's this this line here that normally appears between the high contrast areas of your photo as always a copy of your background okay to make sure that you don't destroy the main file you're going to select the clone stamp this icon here you're going to select the current layer and then to the, to the mode, you want to select the dark color. What this is going to do, I'm going to do a small brush. What this is going to do is to clone my selected area to the halo, but not to the eye contrast area, to the darker part of the, the halo. Usually you want to select the area nearest the halo to make a clean clean of the halo. You just need to paint. See how we are removing the halo and not cloning the eye contrast area or in this case, this rock. When you are editing your photos, make sure you do it precisely. This is the way that I know to remove halos. These were the four techniques that I most used on Photoshop. If you have enjoyed it, don't forget, leave a thumbs up. If you have some questions, don't, uh, don't hesitate in leave, uh, and leave a comment down below. It will be much appreciated. If you aren't already subscribed, we are arriving almost to the first 100 subscribers. Thank you so much guys for the support. And for me, this is it. And I see you on the next video. Bye guys, peace.